Hey guys, welcome to another video and this is the POCO F3 also known as Mi 11X in India. This is my secondary device, my primary is an iPhone of course, so there is a lot of usage that goes onto this particular phone. Now, when I was traveling, I was using this phone as my secondary device. I installed the global or the European, whatever you want to call it, MIUI 13 on it. I enabled the features using root and since then I've been using it and I guess it's time to review it. So in today's video, we're going to review the stable update of MIUI 13 for this particular device. And before we get into the details, if you haven't already, please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. Now, without further ado, hello, awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. So right off the bat, let's see what we have here. This is MIUI version 13.0.3.0. This is stable MIUI based on Android 12, which is a good thing. Although 12L is now out, but this is technically still the latest version of Android. Now it says more features and improvements. New apps can be opened as floating windows directly from the sidebar, optimization, enhanced accessibility support for phone, clock and weather, optimization, mind map nodes are more convenient and intuitive now. Now change log aside, let's actually go to the all specifications part before we actually start talking about the user experience here. Now you do see this is 6 GB plus 2 GB in the stable version as well. So they are counting memory extension, which uh, yeah, I still don't feel makes a difference. Anyways, this is a processor clocked at 3.2 gigahertz. This is Android version 12, of course. So you do have the Android 12 Easter egg present over here. And that works like a charm. You don't have monitor customization, but that's how it is with Xiaomi. The security patch on here is the 1st of January 2022. And the kernel is the perf kernel as always. Now, once you go to the main screen, there are things that I would have to talk about. The first and the most painful part or anything is this the poco launcher trust me it really really bogs down your user experience no matter what device you are on it's xiaomi it's poco it doesn't really matter even the code you know k20 pro for that matter come used to come with the poco launcher and it didn't really feel good so poco launcher has been updated there have been a lot of changes that have been made if you actually go ahead and talk about the poco launcher here you will see that a lot of uh, features from the system launcher have been made available to this particular launcher but this launcher definitely lacks flair even in the miui 13 android 12 version you do have all the options yes but it is not smooth it doesn't really give you that cohesive experience that miui system launcher does so all these things are present double tap to lock screen open app after opening the app drawer and things like those are present but you know it's it's just not smooth if you swipe to the left you do have google feed now see this. This is again a problem with Poco Launcher because if you are on this device that is the Mi 11X with uh, the system launcher, the Google feed doesn't lag this much. So even if you allow it to load, it will load and then it will stutter. So a really, really not so good experience as far as this particular update for the F3 users is concerned. Apart from this, you get the same old control center from MIUI 12.5 enhanced. You don't get the new iOS style look. So nothing new or fancy over here. If you go to the edit option, you do get a performance mode toggle. So that is a good thing that is being you know supplied with MIUI 13, at least for this particular device. Now you don't have the data usage in the mobile data section that is still missing from the China version. And you do have the screen recorder, which records uh, external audio. So no additional features there as well. If you go ahead and enable this, you will get a pop-up notification that improved performance has been enabled. Let's go ahead and turn that off. We don't want our device to be <laughs> overheating, right? So now let's go ahead and talk about the other factors as well. So if you ask me, you know, where is material you? Well, let's, let's go ahead and check a Google app maybe. What do we have here? We have calendar, we have the clock, okay. So it's sort of giving us a blue accent right now. Let's let's actually go ahead and go to a different wallpaper. Now talking about the wallpapers, yes, of course, uh, you know, the MIA 13 wallpapers should be present over here. So if you go to profile, if you go to wallpapers, you will see that all these MIA 13 wallpapers are present and they look pretty decent. They work absolutely fine. Now, once again, let's actually go to the clock application. You will see that in one of the previous betas, uh, Monet UI was working, but now even for Google Apps, it's not working. So they are trying to probably integrate, but it's not really there. And it's a sad scene here, to be very, very frank. 
Now, apart from this, if you pinch here, you have wallpaper, widgets, and settings. So if you go to widgets, you have your standard MIUI 12.5 widgets, no MIUI 13 widgets. So in the global version, in the European version, anywhere except China, even in India for that matter, MIUI 13 is more of a number upgrade instead of a performance and feature upgrade that they had promised when they had a launch event in China, which is really, really saddening. They have been doing this for a very long time and it continues to happen, which is really, really annoying. Now, if you go to the multitasking menu, you have both the options, the vertical and horizontal. You don't really have a lot of options over here. Things which are present since MIUI 12.5, they're working absolutely fine. Now, what I also don't understand is in the settings, uh, all specs menu, you tell us that you have six plus two, eight gigabytes of RAM. Why not show that in the actual usage of the system? So, you know, these are shady practices that actually, you know, make you question if that feature actually works or if it really makes any difference or not. As far as the dialer and the messaging application in the global ROM are concerned, they are still Google, they are not MIUI. So if you're gonna do call recording, you will be getting that notification that this call is now being recorded. Now coming to the security application over here. Now this one I have updated for the newer Game Turbo, but in the MIUI 13 stable update, you still get the sort of a old security application. Moving on, let's actually go to gallery over here. If you go to gallery, you open a picture and you go to the three dot menu, you do have a feature of protective watermark now. So, you know, those things are present. Some small changes are being made here and there, but it's not even close to what MIUI 13 was promised or was supposed to be. As far as the camera application is concerned, all the features still remain the same. There are no major changes, no new features introduced. The stability though is there when it comes to the camera clarity and all the other options and features. Now moving on to settings, let's see what has changed over here exact, exactly. System apps updater, you can see that I have updated all the system applications to make sure that we have a cohesive experience and not any issues. These are the security statistics of this particular device. We are in the month of March and we still have the January security patch. So we've gotten used to all these things, haven't we? So all these things are pretty normal these days. The UI is still the same. There are no major changes. Always on display still has all the old features from 12.5 enhanced. Even if you go to the display section, you have AI image engine and all those things. And remember, if you're installing the global ROM on the Mi 11X, you will actually have to go ahead and root your device and enable the features based on the video that I made. Otherwise, you will not get the 120Hz refresh rate, MAMC and all those features. So I don't know why they're doing that, but uh, yeah, you know, all these features, they're present, they work absolutely fine. Uh, you know, we are at a point wherein I've been talking about all these options and features over and over so many times that I don't even feel like covering them again just to make the video long. If you go to, you know, password and security, now we have Android 12 and MIUI 13 with face unlock. That is a good thing. That works absolutely fine. You have privacy protection, which is still the old one, not the new one. If you go to the battery section, I did mention that you are getting the performance mode toggle, ultra battery saver. If you go to the battery section, you have the normal temperature thing over here. So still the old UI, not really the new, new UI. You have the good old digital well-being present. If you go to special features, you now have sidebar, which has integrated your game turbo and the video toolbox based on the applications that you open this particular feature will pop up accordingly. Floating windows was always there. It works fine now. Second space is something that I've not used more than once or twice in the last 10 years, to be very, very honest. Now, you do have your privacy dashboard and some settings over here. So you have per permission manager, the privacy dashboard is present over here. So notifications, let's actually go to notifications. There are some Android 12 features that I would like to check. So I don't see the option of uh, notification history. Android S Easter egg can be set to, as you can see, water bubbler, food bowl. So all these things are present. Even if you go to the camera application, you will get this notification over here. And if you actually go ahead and click on it, it will tell you that this particular app is using your camera and all those things. So some Android features are integrated. You do have the sort of new control center, but not exactly the brand new one. Those things are present. The ROM is overall smooth. It works fine. If we talk about the charging speed with a you know, 27 watt charger, 33 watt charger, they are just fine. And uh, even if we talk about the battery life, the screen on time has been four to five hours for me. Max tops five and a half hours in heavy usage. So it can get you through a day. The smoothness is there, but sometimes those hiccups are still there. Even though they are calling it a stable release, 
I, you know, strongly feel that Poco Launcher is one of the culprits over here for those occasional jutters and stitters. Uh, you know, what will happen is if you're using the device as a whole without routing and you have a European Poco F3 and it's working fine, you leave it alone for some time and then you wake it up all of a sudden, it'll start stuttering for a couple of seconds and then it'll be back to normal. So these are the small software experiences that Xiaomi has to, you know, go ahead and fix it and make the device experience more cohesive. Now, let's go ahead and actually quickly look at the benchmark numbers here. First, we will look at the CPU throttle test. So as you can see, the CPU throttled to 91% of its max performance and the average score was 226, 356 GIPS, which in my opinion is a very good improvement or a very good consistency. If you further go to Antutu benchmark over here, you do see that you continue to get decent results. I would not say extremely good results, decent results. 668,880 is a decent score for this particular device. The device does heat up considerably when performing very, very high in terms of, you know, graphic intensive games or benchmark numbers and stuff like that moving on let's go ahead and talk about geekbench over here the single core and multi-core score now this for me has dropped for some reason i used to get somewhere around 1000 points in single core and 3200 points in multi-core and uh, these tests always are done in a controlled environment when we allow the device to cool down we leave it alone for 10-15 minutes and turn it off make sure there are no notification activities going on and no background applications but despite that i see that the score is dropped so all in all, if you ask me, MI 13, when it launched in China for Chinese devices, it looked like a huge upgrade, a lot of new features, a lot of new, you know, wallpapers, good looks, so many good things. But as always, just like every year, when they are bringing this particular software to the global markets, yeah, it's, it's MI UI, you know, 12.6 enhanced maybe. And it's not even enhanced. It lags so much some of the time. See, just see this. This is not a good experience. I understand this is not a flagship device, but hey, you are charging 28 to 30,000 rupees in India and probably a similar price in Europe as well. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video and will you be using MIA 13 or an amazing ROM like Dubfest? Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.